In simple words, if an object in space revolves around a star, we call it a planet, and if it revolves around a planet, then we call it a satellite. When it comes to the classification of satellites, it is divided into two main categories, one is natural satellites and the other is artificial satellites. We all know that, the satellites that are found in nature, are called natural satellites. For example, the Moon is the only natural satellite, of the planet Earth, similarly, Jupiter has 67 such natural satellites, and so on. But all the satellites that are created by humans, are called artificial satellites. In this tutorial, we will uncover the details of artificial satellites. So let's start. As we discussed earlier, the motion of various planets or satellites can be determined by Newton's law of motion and Newton's law of gravitation. From this, scientists believe that if any object launched from the Earth can be given the proper speed at the proper distance from the Earth, then the object will orbit the Earth like the Moon. Putting this idea into practice made it possible to launch the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, on October 4, 1957. Today, technology has advanced so much that it is possible to place artificial satellites around not only the Earth but also other planets. A satellite is launched vertically or eastwards from the Earth's surface by means of a rocket. With the help of rockets arranged behind the satellite, the direction of its motion is changed in such a way that the satellite can attain a certain level of horizontal velocity after reaching a certain height. Then it is placed in a certain orbit and starts to circle the Earth. Applications of Artificial Satellites Basically, artificial satellites are used for communication, weather forecasting, military use for spying on enemy troops, and collection of information about the natural resources of the Earth, other planets, and outer space. Types of Artificial Satellites Based on the satellite's direction of motion and distance from the Earth's surface, artificial satellites are classified into two categories, geostationary satellites and polar satellites. Geostationary Satellite Artificial satellites that revolve in the same direction as Earth in their predetermined orbits, about 35,800 kilometers above the Earth's surface, are called geostationary or geosynchronous satellites. Some examples of such satellites are INSAT or Indian National Satellite System, GEOS or Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite of USA, Mediasat of Europe, etc. These are high orbit satellites. Basically, they are used for communication and weather forecasting, like measuring cloud top temperatures, water vapor, measuring land temperature vegetation coverage, and facilitating cyclone path prediction, etc. Polar Satellite Artificial satellites that orbit the Earth, in a north-south orbit, crossing the north and south poles, and are about 500 to 800 kilometers above the Earth's surface, are called polar satellites. For example, Landsat, NOAA, SPOT, and ERS are a few examples of polar satellites. These are low-orbit satellites. Basically, they are used to study the universe, help forecast the weather, transfer telephone calls, over the oceans, assist in the navigation of ships and aircraft, monitor crops and other resources, support military activities, etc. Actually, any artificial satellite obeys Kepler's law. Hence, the orbit of an artificial satellite may also be elliptical or circular, like the orbit of a planet around the sun, or the orbit of a satellite around a planet. However, since the eccentricity of the orbits of artificial satellites is quite low in most cases, assuming the orbits are circular, does not lead to significant errors in calculations. Orbital Velocity of Artificial Satellites The velocity at which the satellite orbits the Earth is called the orbital velocity of the satellite. Now we will determine the formula for the orbital velocity of an artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. So let us consider, the mass of the Earth as capital M, the radius of the Earth capital R, 
the mass of the artificial satellite as small m, the orbital velocity of the satellite as small v, and the height of the orbit from the surface of the Earth is small h. Hence the distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth, that is the radius of the orbit, small r is equal to, capital R plus h. Let's assume the orbit to be circular, then the centripetal force is equal to, mv square by r, or mv square divided by capital R plus small h. In fact, the gravitational force between Earth and satellite, provides this centripetal force for orbiting the Earth. From Newton's law of gravitation, we know gravitational force F is equal to, gmm by r square. Therefore, mv square by r is equal to, gmm by r square. By solving this equation we get, small v is equal to, root over gm by capital R plus small h. This is the formula for the orbital velocity, of an artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. We also know, the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth, small g is equal to, gm by r square. So capital gm is equal to, small g into capital r square. Now by substituting the value of gm, in equation number 1, we get small v is equal to, root over small g, capital R square by capital R plus small h or v is equal to, capital R into, root over small g by capital R plus small h. This is also the formula for the orbital velocity, of an artificial satellite orbiting the Earth. Period of revolution of artificial satellites. The time it takes, to travel one complete orbit around an object, is called the period of revolution of artificial satellites. If the period of revolution of the satellite is t, the distance traveled by the satellite in this time is equal to, the circumference of the orbit, which is 2 pi into small r, or 2 pi into capital R plus small h. Therefore, capital T is equal to, 2 pi into capital R plus small h by v. Now substituting the value of v, in equation number 2, and after solving we get, capital T is equal to, 2 pi by capital R, into root over capital R plus H whole cube, by small g. This is the formula for the period of revolution of artificial satellite. Weightlessness in artificial satellites. Astronauts always feel weightless, in an artificial satellite of the Earth. But on a natural satellite, like the Moon, astronauts do not experience weightlessness, because the Moon has more mass, and exerts a gravitational force on them. In artificial satellites, the mass of the satellite is less, so it exerts a less gravitational force on the object, due to which the astronaut feels weightless. But it must be remembered that, the attractive force of the Earth, acting on the artificial satellite, or the astronaut inside it, can never be zero. If this force were zero, there would be no question of the satellite orbiting the Earth, because then it would not be possible, to provide the centripetal force necessary for orbiting. So an object being weightless means, the reaction force acting on it is zero, but the gravitational force is not zero. If you enjoy our videos, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.